everybody. Welcome to Will and Drew's Gaming Retrospective. You're listening to episode 47 for the week of October 20th, 2019. I'm your host, Drew. I'm joined by Will. What's up, dude? What's going on, Drew? You know, we have a a list of topics that we want to discuss today. And I feel like, honestly, we're probably not going to actually talk about any of them. <laughs> uh that's very accurate. It's, That's very accurate. It's just one of those weeks, man. You and I have been sitting here um, for the better part of about an hour now, mm-hmm. now talking about various things. Yep. And very little of it has actually been about the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, so, you know, I folded up this white towel and uh, I got a clear shower curtain from Target on sale. I have a, a oh man, I didn't share this story with you. I had a beard accident last night. I want to hear all about it. All right, this is the first time this is being shared in public, okay? Um, I love how we're promoting, like, the lack of the show still. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear all about this beard, uh, this beard drama. You want the hot gossip? <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it all, give it to me. So, I want all the juicy stuff. So, um, anybody that's seen my profile picture knows that I have this very luxurious beard. It's nice and full. I like to keep it fairly trimmed, but not too trimmed, you know? Like to have mm-hmm. a little bit there you can kind of dig your fingers into. But like, mm-hmm. you know, like I like it neat though. I don't like it scruffy. Like I don't want it messy or anything like that. I just want it kind of a little long, not too long. And, yeah, like Billy Mays ish. Yeah, Billy Mays ish or, you know, uh Frank from American Pickers. Right. Okay. Okay. Um I'm using that because I see that at work all the time. But anyway, um so I had a beard trimmer that the battery was starting to lose its charge on. So for a while I've been like, okay, I really need to get this replaced. But, um, you know, I just, I've been kind of kicking it down the road for like the past two years. Well, I don't know what the fuck happened to it, but it went missing. Um, and I suspect one of the cats threw it away. Like, I think I might've we'll ha- see- like had it near the sink and then it went in the garbage can and it got taken outside. I don't know. So I just want to add here, um, when it comes to buying a beer trimmer, usually you go to Target or Walmart or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's always like, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. It's always a Remington or whatever, Mm -hmm. or a wall. Yeah. And it always comes with like 48 different fucking attachments. So, so (laughs) that's, that's kind of where my story gets interesting, right? Because you basically hit the the nail on the head, right? So, so the, the beer trimmer I had, it's a rem, it was a Remington. It got knocked into the garbage or something. I don't know. I can't find it anywhere. So for like the past four weeks, I've been putting off buying a new beer trimmer. Like I've just been fucking lazy. I've been busy. This hasn't, I just haven't had time. Yeah. And it started getting to the point where like, if I really wanted to, I could fucking probably braid the damn thing. Like I would, (laughs) I would sit in the car on my commute with a comb and like comb my beard and it would never be straight. Like I would just constantly comb it. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. I need to do something about this. So yesterday I got out of work at 11 and I went to Walmart at midnight. Okay. Jesus, dude. I was desperate. I needed a fucking beard trimmer. You're like, I'm just getting this shit done. Now, now there are a couple things inherently wrong with the statement of going to Walmart at midnight. Um, but it was great because nobody was there, but it was bad because I was just coming off of a 12 hour shift at work. So I really shouldn't have been, I shouldn't (laughs) have been there. Yeah. It's not the best decision making kind of mindset to be in. No. I spent 25 minutes in the, the beard trimming section. Easy. Trying to, f- to pick out between 60 attachments and one attachment. Mm-hmm. And I settled on this one that basically um, it's, got the, the, it's got one attachment that clips on and then you can adjust it with like a wheel to like change the length of it. Okay. Which is very similar to what I originally had. It's a Phillips one blade or some shit. And it's got this special kind of blade that you can use it to actually shave like your, your, your throat or like I'm bald. So like I, I shave my head and allegedly this will do that too. And I start taking this thing out of the box when I get home and I'm already saying to myself, as I'm like taking it out, I'm like, "Mm, this is probably a mistake, (laughs) but I'm $60 in and I've already gone too far. Right. I'm like, let me see what I could do with this thing. So I take it out of the package and I like run it over my hand to see how well it shaves a hand. Yep. I'm like, oh, that's, that's nice and clean. Right. Like I just did a little patch on my, the top of my, uh, you know, where my thumb and my, my forefinger are. Right. Uh huh. Like, oh, that's pretty nice. That's nice and smooth. You know, I'm like, all right, this will be good. So 
I take the, the clipper, I go into the bathroom, I put the attachment on, I set it for the longest length, and I go to shave. And nothing happens. I'm like, all right. I knock it down a couple clicks, a mm-hmm. shorter. I go to shave, nothing happens. Okay. I knock, I knock it down a few more clicks. Nothing happens. What? And then I pull the thing away, and like a hunk of my beard comes out. Oh. And I look at the clipper, and the fucking thing is packed with my hair like it's getting trapped in the clipper like it doesn't it doesn't expel the beardage um interesting okay <laughs> so i i see where you're going with this so like you're not seeing your your billy mays hair follicles just kind of dripping in the sink right they're just kind of getting caked onto the thing and and not going anywhere so Finally, like I, I dismantle this thing again and I see it all caked in there. And then I look up at my face and they're like, there's this huge, like, just, I just fucked up my beard. Like, and once you do that, like there's only one way you can go and that's lower into the skin. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty much it, dude. So I spent, uh, the rest of the evening, um, shaving off my beard. I am now back at a goatee and I did the bald head thing. Cause you know. I'm bald. Yeah. And this is not a look that I've had since, uh, oh, geez. Well, I've never had the bald head with the goatee. Mm-hmm. I always had the beard and the bald head, but I haven't had a goatee in probably five years. Wow. It's been a while. Well, you know, it sucks when, when things like this happen because that's always what happens. Like you yeah. end up having to like make a goatee or kind of like create something that you didn't really want because you kind of fucked up. Yeah. And there's never a fix. Like the fix is like, I have to settle for this Mm -hmm. or I just go clean shaven and like, you know, you're you're kind of a psychopath if you do that. Yeah. That's something I can never ever do because I literally look like I'm 10. Uh, Dude, same. It's really scary. So it's like horrifying. The funny thing with all this is that Nikki had no idea all this is going on because she was asleep, you know? Yep. I, I, She's in bed when I get home from work. So she'll like wake up. She'll hear me come in. She'll wake up, kiss me goodnight, and then pass the fuck out again. And I won't see her until she leaves for work in the morning when I'm still sleeping. So she woke up this morning and noticed that my beard was gone. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) She's like, what the fuck happened? Yep. And I feel like every woman has that same reaction. Like, especially when they're your partner, they're they're always going to be like, what did you do? Yeah. And then you're like, you feel like even more of a jackass. You're like, look, I, I don't want to talk about it. Like, it's already bad enough every that I can see what I was doing. Every guy that I know has, has done this. Like, it's just a part of, of being a man. It like, is. Unfortunately. And I just wanted to just share that experience with everybody. Well, you know what? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of listeners that can relate. We should make a video game about shaving beards. <laughs> I do know there was a, a pretty popular um, grooming device. Uh, it's basically a, a beard trimmer, but for kind of manscaping as well. Hmm. And it's called like a lawnmower 2.0 or something. What? It's it's lawnmower or it's like man mower. It's man- fucking, <laughs> it's some shit, right? Man mower. And like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. Um, sounds like a fucking Xbox 360 gamer tag. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, no, it, apparently it's supposed to be really good, and it's it's good for all the manscaping things. But, you know, my final thoughts on this, be careful. Uh, make sure that you save some of those 48 pieces of the attachments. Oh, I only um, have one. There's only one attachment on this one, sir. Dude, every <laughs> time I, I get one of those things, and I've probably bought like fucking 50 of them my entire like career, Every time that I get to like unpacking it, so it's you know you're you're unpacking that fucking hard plastic that's mm-hmm. impossible to open up. You're using fucking craft scissors and shit, and then like you get to the uh, accessories, and I always do the same thing. I, I dump all of them on a counter. I take a garbage bag and I just fucking sweep them in there in one full sweep. It's just so I, <laughs> nope. It's kind of like what I do with like a pizza crust. So. <laughs> this is going to blow blow people's minds, right? So I'm one of those people that some of you may hate that doesn't eat their pizza crust unless it's delicious, soft, and has like a garlic flavor to it, okay? But most of the time when I'm eating pizza, 
I huck that thing in the trash. It's not just a gentle toss. It's a huck where it hits the side of the can and then falls in. That is my, my method when it comes to like a bad crust. It's going boom, boom. <laughs> just like that. Boom, boom. And it's fucking frisbeed and hard because that's how much I, I don't like hard, disgusting crust. You know, we, we've been um, to Pepe's. Uh, no, Modern. We went to Modern together. A very fine place. I don't remember you hucking the pizza crust at anybody. I remember uh, you not eating it, but but you were you were a polite customer that day. Yeah, it's probably because I didn't have a garbage can nearby, but if I mm. did, mm. they would have been hucked. Yeah. Hucked like a boomerang, Drew. Can you Except imagine not coming back? What if what if like a pizza crust was a weapon in a video game? I feel like if it was <laughs> if it was stale <laughs> enough. <laughs> If it was stale enough, you could create, like, a shank out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at old Johnny in the corner whittling away his pizza crust. <laughs> yeah, you're like, holy shit, dude, this dude's gonna kill me. Uh, I He's was, gonna kill me with this fucking Domino's crust. I was whittling Domino's before you were born, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Uh, thank you so much for hitting that download button. Please subscribe oh. to the show. Check us out on the web at www.wdgrpodcast.com, where we will blog about beards, pizza crust, and video games. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at WDGR Podcast. It's at WDGR Podcast. Uh, if somebody would like to tweet to you, Will, about their pizza crust uh, obsession, how can they find you? Will underscore gear. And you can tell me about all your beard centric stories at Scion Storm. Oh man, I am so sorry that that took eleven minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're we're sorry, folks. Uh, but this is <laughs> we hope you enjoy it though. This is going to be that kind of show tonight, everybody. So, it's going to be uh, that kind of show. Sit in and buckle up for a wild ride, I suppose. Mm. Uh, what have you been playing, man? Not much. Um, I'm a little disappointed in myself because once again, I did kind of set an agenda to play uh, some more Skyrim and Sekiro. Um, didn't get around to it, just had some other stuff going on and it is what it is, but, uh, you know, I'm excited to kind of get back to, to both those games. I've been watching a ton of, um, of Sun He Legends gifts again, mm. um, which I shared on, uh, the Facebook, I believe. And the Facebook, he's the Facebooks. Yeah. And, uh, he's just inspired me to get back to the game. Uh, it's such a beautiful game. And, uh, there's been a thing going on called Inktober. Mm. Um, on Twitter, and I've been sharing a lot of posts by uh, John Devlin, um, who's uh, one of my favorite artists, and he does a lot of art for uh, uh, Sekiro and a bunch of other games, mo- mainly Dark Souls and Sekiro, and um, he does a really fine job with what he does. And uh, it's just, there's been a lot of Sekiro material that I've been viewing, and it's it's really inspired me to get back to the game. So that's cool. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of you know rev that up again along with Skyrim. I'm not going to put Skyrim away, but those are going to be my two uh, what I call juggle games. Um, but yeah, overall, to answer that question, man, I have not been playing much. What about you? Um, basically the same. Um, I've kind of had a bit of a crazy week. I've been doing a lot of overtime at work because. I spent uh, about $700 on some new recording equipment, and mm. I told Nikki that I would work for it so, <laughs> yeah. um, as, as part of the deal to not affect our finances negatively. Um, mm-hmm. I am doing as much overtime as I can to cover it, and then uh, there's this new overtime thing that's going to be happening um, at work anyhow, so I'll probably be doing um, a lot more overtime and a lot less gaming. but. Um, so far this thing is worth it. I got the Zoom F6, which is a multi-track field recorder. And this thing is really cool because, um, I can use it for filming. If I'm on a video shoot, I can record up to six inputs at a time, which is, you know, pretty fucking useful if you're doing like a interview or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you're just filming a movie, you know, usually one, one, uh, microphone is enough. But this thing also hooks up to a computer and I can record directly into a computer with these six inputs. And, and really the best part about it is the next time I come over to your house so we can record an episode in person, I don't need to wait two and a half hours for the files to export like I did with that other beast. Yeah, that was, that was fun, but you know, obviously just not that practical. I'm, I'm yeah. really excited for uh, your, your latest purchase. I've, I've seen it, uh, not in person, of course, but 
it looks cool, man. It, it yeah. looks like one of those things that you would see on the set of a film, like the, the yeah. kind of equipment that like you just don't, that isn't like really consumer friendly. So like when you see this thing, and I'm sure we're going to share it at some point, mm. um, you kind of look at it and you're like, whoa, like what's yeah. that? You it, know, it, it kind of falls into this, like um, what they call prosumer uh, market, which is basically yes. um, if, if you haven't heard of the term before, it's it's above what your normal consumer would purchase, but below what your normal professional would purchase. Makes so sense. if you're somebody that's serious about what you're doing, but just don't have thousands of dollars to spend. These find a nice balance, and of course, you're going to have some concessions uh, with them, you know, compared to an item that might do the same thing at at a you know a two thousand dollar price point. Mm-hmm. But you know, for for my needs and uh, what I use it for, uh, I think this is the way to go. Um, I was looking at a couple of other ones that were a little bit more expensive, but I'm now that I have this in my hands, like I think I made the right choice. Plus, it looks like it came from Doom. It kind of does, man. It, it's got a weird sort of, it almost looks like a weird like bomb or something. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like this is like the control mechanism for the BFG. Right. Or like, you know, a, a, an actual like device that you have to like yeah. capture and then like yeah. bring back, like it's part of a mission or something. Yeah. Like it's intrinsically like video game-esque. I love it. But I'm still figuring out how to use it. Um, I haven't had a chance to do anything other than run some tests with it. Uh, I've been very happy with the tests that I've run. Um, so I think uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to use. I'm really excited to put it through the paces. Good. Um, outside of that, I got a little bit more work on Control a couple days ago. Uh, I've been trying to circle back to that game and really put some time into that when I can. And, uh, you know, I got to this new area called the Panopticon, I think it is. Uh, it's, it's like a, it's a word that I've never heard of before. Pan Opticon. Oh yeah. So I guess it is a real world, a real, real word. Um, I've only had two beers <laughs> and it's like this like huge, massive like room. Um, and it's, it's all cells, like all these different, um, objects of power are locked up in there and. Your character's looking for someone. I won't say who to avoid spoilers for anybody that hasn't played the game, um, but she's she's looking for somebody there. So you go into this like huge area, and it's just sprawling and massive and super tall. And of course, you know, unfortunately, you're not going to get to see as much of it as as you do when you walk in. Like it's you know sectioned off to really where you can play. Um, but it's just like there was a moment where I just kind of stood still in the game and just looked around, and it was just like, holy shit, this is sprawlingly awesome great game that sounds man. pretty cool man you, you gotta play this game i need to play sekiro and you need to play control uh yeah um that's without a doubt gonna happen and i do have some vacation time coming up which we discuss on the show so mm. i know we're gonna meet up and uh play some games at some point so definitely um it's it's just uh i think if you played it it would it would classify as a will's cool game i hope so man because uh I am quite picky about my cool games, but it sounds like it could uh, could win a spot there. Mm-hmm. Coveted spot. <laughs> um, let's hit the mailbag. Let's do it. Puxor says this will be your last episode to ship before the Halloween, uh, before the Halloween, before Halloween, barring any special festive features. What are your go-to games for such an event? I'm personally trying to find a copy of Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Genesis. I'm playing more My Night Job, and it seems appropriate time to try out Maze, uh, which you picked up last year. And he linked all three of those uh, in the post as well. Um, I mean, I guess Control is kind of a spooky game. You know, it's it has some horror elements in it. I, I feel like I'm kind of cheaping out on that. Um, I, my favorite horror-ish game would probably be Splatterhouse. Okay. Um, that's a Turbo Graphics classic. But uh, I can't say, like, I've ever really been a big Halloween uh, gaming fan in the first place. I'm not, like, a fan of horror. So, you know, horror games and playing certain types of games around Halloween are just kind of kind of meh for me. What about yeah, you? I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, just reading this question and thinking about it, I'm just not one of those kind of people that 
will specifically go out of my way to play something based on a season or mm. based on a, a particular holiday. Um, however, I, you know, kind of circling back to what you said about control, I think that you can find uh, sort of scenarios or, or find themes in games that, that are relevant to a, a particular you know, time of the year. Sure. And I think with even just Skyrim, uh, I'm pretty sure there's, you know, some not Halloween quests, but there's, well, you're there's... playing as a fucking vampire Lord. Right. Like there's ways that you can spin it that way. Like there's even like a, there's a werewolf like journey quest thing that you can do. That's very like Halloween like, and I've played it before and it's actually very good. Mm. Um, so there's, there's ways that you can spin it. Um, I do have some games that are, I guess like a little bit more in tune with that. Like I, you know, I have Silent Hill one. I mean, that would be a, a cool game to fire up. Um, if I want to play something, you know, creepy, hmm. but, uh, you know, I'm like you, I'm not really a big horror person in general. Um, I think Blair witch, which is a game that just came out recently. I want to say that would be a good one to fire up, but yeah, I just, it's just not really something I would do. Uh, so I think it, it, I have a hard time answering this one, but it's mm. cool that uh, Pucks was able to find some games that are, um, you know, much more in tune with this particular uh, holiday. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that that are, um, you know, they they use October as a means to play those types of games. Like it's it's a Halloween themed month, so it's going to be a Halloween themed game month. You know. Yeah. And I'm all for that. You know, if if. Uh, you know, choosing a theme for each month to play your games is, is something you enjoy doing, or even if it's just this one time a year, like fucking do it, man. Um, you know, there's uh, a couple podcasts that I listen to and they, they do the same thing. It's like, Oh, it's October time to list all the spooky games or, you know, that sort of thing. And I think that's yeah. great. You know, like, no, it more, is cool. More power to them. Yeah. I think you just, you have people out there that just do things like that. Um, like my buddy miles who actually listens to the show, um, he may actually listen to this episode and he'll be able to relate to this, but him and his uh, wife, they, they watch like horror movies, uh, during like the month of October, specifically just for the month of October, you know, it's, it's Halloween month. Mm -hmm. That's just what they do. Um, I don't really, I can't really recall of a time that I do something similar to that. Yeah. Um, I probably could if I thought about it hard enough, but I certainly just don't really, I really go out of my way. Um to sort of do like a sort of thematic month or week or whatever. Right. But I respect the people that do. I think it's cool. It's creative. It, it's sure. a way to, uh, to celebrate something in a unique way. I mean, we're, we're all too old now to get our pillowcases and, <laughs> you know, pound the pavement and hope that we find full size Snickers bars, you know, sitting outside. Those mm -hmm. days are over. Yeah. I mean, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. I mean, you could be a parent and be like, Hey, you know what, son, Why, I'm going to grab this for you. <laughs> and then you get home and you're like, all right, you know, go ahead and dump it out. And you just grab all the good shit mm -hmm. and you leave him with, uh, you know, all the Mary Janes and the fucking, you know, hard candy, <laughs> like those stupid fucking, those fucking hard candy, strawberry like things that it's like a strawberry hard candy that has like a weird fake stale strawberry gel on the inside. And it's with like the a, foil wrapping with the foil wrapping. I fucking got, love those things. You bite your tongue. You know what? They remind me of my grandmother, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. <laughs> you know what? She, your grandmother was probably a wonderful person. But, oh, uh, she was. I miss her. You know, but uh, <laughs> fuck that candy. You're right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Joe Donut says, it's more normal than ever to play video games as an adult. That's practically the premise of this podcast. What do you think will change about your gaming habits as you get much older? Will you still game into your 60s and 70s, or do you expect to take on new hobbies? If you are still planning on gaming until your hands fall off, do you think the types of games you play will change? Personally, when I look at all the turn-based strategy games and JRPGs in my backlog, I feel like I'm keeping some gems in my back pocket from my elderly years. This has got to be like one of the best questions I think we've ever had. Um, mm. This is something that I think about somewhat often. Um, and I think a lot of gamers think about this. I, I would imagine they would, because we all reach this point, especially, you know, in our age, because Joe, you and myself were, were all in our thirties and you start to wonder like, how much longer could this go on for? Uh, how much longer am I willing to go on being a gamer? Right. And there are questions that we have in the back of our minds that we never really answer because I think there's some fear involved there because we're thinking like, 
oh shit, like they, there could be a time where like I, I lose interest and I don't want to. Right. So I think, I think it depends on the person. I mean, I'd like to think that I will be a gamer for quite a long time, mm -hmm. but I can say that I've seen the progression of my gaming habits change a lot as I've gotten older. And I feel like the older I get, they may end up fading more. Um, I'm not really afraid of that because I think that at the end of the day, like when I'm 50 or 60, I'm still going to always love them and always appreciate them, but I may not be playing them as much. Um, in my forties, uh, I would imagine, yes, it's still going to be pretty much where it's at now, which is a little bit more of like a relaxed approach, but it's a weird thought because like I said, there's fear. I think there's a part of me that wants to always enjoy them and wants to always have that same feeling that we had when we were younger. And you can feel that slipping away. At least I feel that slip away sometimes because as life progresses, your life changes and it changes and it gets more serious. And when life gets more serious, you find that it, it's harder to, you know, live the unserious uh, parts of your life. So that's just how I view it. Um, but I'm very protective of gaming and I, I'm very protective of my time with it. And as much as I don't have a lot of time with it, I, I try to cherish the time that I do because I, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to not be part of my life. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, this is, this is kind of a tricky question. Um, but I think it's a good one. I, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of weird because like, um, you know, they've, they've recently announced, you know, the PS five and, you know, a while back they announced the, the new Xbox and how both of those are expected to come out next year. And I have like basically two things that are on my mind. First, I'm like, Oh fuck, how the hell am I going to come up with the money for this? And secondly, it's like, I have all these fucking games I haven't beaten yet. And I think that both of those thoughts kind of go hand in hand with this topic because um, it's just like I, I have this like building backlog and I have no desire to <clears throat> to stop investing in gaming as as a hobby. But I certainly don't have the time that I once had to invest in gaming as a hobby. You know, my, my, ho I've always had a lot of hobbies. I've always had a lot of interests. I've always had a lot of things going on. I, not the type of person to sit still. And thankfully, um, like this podcast has kind of helped me rekindle my love of gaming. And in many cases has even kind of sparked and pushed, um, me to play more games, mm -hmm. including games that I never would have played otherwise. Like, uh, you know, some of the games that we did for our indie playthrough, <clears throat> but like, you know, at some point there's, there's going to be, you know, like other things that are just more important and they're just going to take precedent. And, you know, I guess I'll just kind of have to deal with those when they happen. You know, yeah. I think I, it... like, like I, I, you know, he, he mentions like uh, strategy games and JRPGs and, and how like, <clears throat> you know, for, for somebody that's older, um, th those types of games, maybe easier to play and like i remember uh playing PUBG with uh with tom a little while back and like i'm having a hell of a time like figuring out who's who like i can't see the guys that are shooting me um i have a hard time identifying enemy from friend and and like these are types of things that are already happening to me at 36 you know when i'm like 60 or 70 i'm going to be you know <laughs> not really struggling uh, so you know like like uh command and conquer where you're facing like you know the bright red guys versus the bright blue guys <laughs> sounding more and more appealing all the time yeah yeah it's uh it's an interesting thing man it really is it, it's such a loaded question because there's so much that goes into answering this um because it, it really does stem off into like, you know, your backlog and yeah. your age and like how age can change you. And like, it's just, uh, that's why it's such a good question. Um, I mean, this is a big topic. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of thing that really doesn't deserve a, a five minute answer at the front of a podcast. 
No, I mean, I think it's like, again, it's just such a great question because it really makes you ponder. It really makes you sit there and think, wow, like, you know, either I haven't really thought about this or I haven't thought about it enough. Right. And, you know, where, where is this going to take me? Am I going to become a sort of command and conqueror kind of guy that just sits there with like, you know, heavy prescription glasses on just like at his computer? Like, or or am I going to be playing the switch and playing like, I don't know, like Mario Odyssey. Like it's, there's really no way to tell because since when you, when you get older and things change and you progress into different uh, tastes with what you like, it could end up reverting back to something more simplistic or it could Mm. revert to something that's more complicated. Like I know, and this is kind of a closing statement for me. I I think a lot of people know now or should know by now that like when it comes to games, I really do enjoy indie games and I enjoy cool games and I enjoy games that really have um, an impact on me. Mm. And if they don't have an impact on me, then I get very disinterested like or uninterested like very quickly. Um, because I'm looking for meaning, I'm looking for something kind of powerful. And I think that's why I gravitate towards games like Greece and Journey and shit like that. All these games I've mentioned a thousand times because they changed me or they, they shaped my, my gaming experience. And now I, I yearn for more of that. Mm. Um, but don't get me wrong. I like Vanquish doesn't really fit that bill. Vanquish is like, this game's just fucking cool. Like, right. There's no meaning to it. You you playing, you know, the the premise is very simple, but there's still a part of me, obviously, that enjoys uh, some of those aspects in a game like that. Well, you know, now that you're mentioning it in that context, I don't think it's much different from going to a movie and and watching a movie like, um, you know, uh, the Avengers or watching a movie like, uh, Taxi Driver. You know, you have a you have a movie that's built for pure entertainment, where you have a movie that's really meant to make you kind of think and open your eyes to. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? And maybe Taxi mm-hmm. Driver isn't the best example. It's the first one that came to mind. But just something like like deep and meaningful, and you know, like life changing, a life changing film, a movie that's going to be like an Oscar nominated film. Like I love the Avengers. They're never going to get nominated for an Oscar. No, I mean, and that's, and that's, okay. that's just it. Uh, th- and that's just it, man. Like, there's a time and place for that kind of stuff. And we all want a little bit of that tune out with a, a movie like Transformers 1 or Fast and Furious 1, like kind of terrible movies. But there's a time and place for that. Sometimes you just want to watch something like that because it's just kind of neat. Um, you want to see, like, the, the bubble gum. Yeah. And then there's other times that you, you want to see the, the dirt and the drama and the seriousness of something like Schindler's list. Right. Um, and same applies for games. So yeah. I think I'll leave it at that because it, like I said, it's, it's something I could really expand on. Yeah. It, for me, it's a definitely an ever evolving topic. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> you just have to look at the, the shelves and you can kind of see if, if you look at my gaming collection and you look at which systems I have, you can kind of see, you know, what I was doing in my life based on the quantity of games for that system. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. So, um, great questions, uh, from both of you. Thank you yes. so much for sending them in. Swing on by our discord room. If you ever have anything on your mind that you'd like to ask so that we can talk about it on the show. And with that, the mailbag is closed. So what's next? Will? we got this list of stuff and I really don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, well so um tell me about I, this uh this fun thing that you got yes um so i was going to mention on the last episode that i did buy a quite a unique item so it's a, a midi controller um it's essentially a keyboard but not um and, and here's why so i learned that you have you know obviously a piano you have an electronic piano you have electronic keyboards and then you have what's called a midi controller which is kind of like a electronic keyboard except you need a computer to power it. So it doesn't produce sound on its own. Um, it has no speakers on it. It's very light because the the sort of mechanisms aren't really inside of this thing. It's, it's probably quite minimal from like a, a architectural standpoint and a mechanism standpoint. Um, but long story short, that's what I bought. And I got it for 
number of reasons. I want to learn how to play piano. I want to learn how to play keyboard, essentially. And I figured that we've been talking about like kind of a new intro to the show, like a new jingle, a new theme. And uh, I realized that I could create something with that as well. So mm. I started messing around with it. It's an amazing device. Uh, I have access to an enormous amount of sounds from pianos uh, to synths. And uh, I've been working on a couple different ideas for the show and they're shaping up. And uh, I'm really excited to share that with you and, and everyone. And mm. Drew and I will be uh, narrowing down on something somewhat soon. Yeah. And uh, we'll debut it when we're ready. But yeah, it's uh, it's been a fun little device. And I've been learning piano uh, sort of roughly just on my own, like with YouTube videos and stuff. And it's been great. It's it's a really, uh, really special purchase because it's brought an enormous amount of joy to me in a very short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, so like when you sit down and start playing, like what is like your mindset? Where Where's what's your headspace at? Like, sure. So uh, I've always been fairly creative, just naturally as an individual, and I've always been attracted to making music. I've just never really done it officially. I've never really stuck with one instrument and just kind of went all in. Mm -hmm. So uh, my headspace is really, I just start kind of hitting keys. I, I hit keys, I come up with like little sounds that, that sound right to me um, and just sound good. So a lot of it is just testing out different uh, synth files, and there's thousands to choose from. I, mm. I play ones that sound good to me, and I, I start coming up with different combinations. So I'll, I'll literally just try things. I'll hit one button, hit another button, mm -hmm. try to tune it up with like what I would hear from a song that kind of sounds right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been able to come up with quite a few things that just sound really good, um, mm. sound kind of official. So uh, a lot of it's just trial and error literally just hitting keys man like not really like a child i'm not just slamming <laughs> on things but but you know the concept is similar where you're just you're just trying shit dude like you yeah. know that that's really where my my headspace goes is i just get into like this creative space and i get really focused and i just that's it man i don't think there really is anything else to expand on that's kind of what i do yeah. and i mess around with chords uh, you know, on the keys and just think, okay, like that sounds pretty good. Like, let me try this. So that sounds horrible. Um, I guess it would be the same process that a real musician would, would go through. Like, you mm. know, a lot of people like churches and the midnight and all of these guys that make incredible music they're they have to start somewhere. It's not like yeah. they just come up with a song, like in seconds, they're, they're hitting keys, they're trying different melodies and they, they just kind of start making notes and remembering what they're doing. And it's it's also kind of amazing, like how much you remember, like you can do a bunch of different things and you kind of like can circle back to something you did and you, you kind of remember, like you remember where you hit the keys. And that's what's so cool about being in that creative space is like, even if you're not a musician, because uh, I'm certainly not, um, you realize that you can start building those sort of building blocks of, of what it's like to create a, a song or create a, a jingle mm -hmm. and it just starts to come together. And when it does, um, I know, you know, this cause you're a musician. Um, it's one of the most rewarding feelings when you yeah. can come up with something, you did it on your own and it sounds fucking good. Yeah. And you're like, Holy shit. Like I, I might have something here. Some of the most, uh, proud moments of, my 36 years on this earth have been, uh, you know, related to writing and performing music, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> uh Dave, uh, who's been on the show, um, and I, we've been in, uh, uh, bands going back into our high school years and, uh, man, it is, um, it's a great feeling like composing something and, and composing something with somebody else to have that collaboration where like if you're really jiving with somebody and like if like you were to play something on your your uh keyboard your midi controller and like that might inspire me to come up with something that you know maybe I wouldn't have come up with on my own you know and then something that I'm doing inspires you and you kind of get this like synergy man it's it's so fucking cool it is cool, man. And like, like you said, you get that synergy, you can feed off, off of each other. And it's amazing, like how many people I've spoken to about 
about this thing and like how I'm just like kind of telling people like, yeah, like I've always kind of wanted to learn piano. Like I've, I've always wanted to learn an instrument and really just kind of get close to mastering it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you tell people, you can kind of see that it sparks this, uh, creativity within that person. Sure. And like, you get a lot of people that are like, oh, wow, like that, that's cool. Like I've always wanted to do something like that. And yeah. You know, then they'll like spark up a conversation about how they, they play guitar or they, they used to play guitar and maybe they want to pick it back up again. And you find that in today's world, there's so much, there's such a lack of creativity. And I think that we've just moved out of that, that space of yeah. doing something creative outside of our work and outside of our just normal lives. And I think it's really um, valuable uh, to, yeah. to do something creative because it's important to pursue something that is stimulating and has nothing to do with your, your normal life. You know, it's kind of, kind of strange in a way too, because you're, you're using a, a keyboard that relies on a computer, um, to, to function, right? Your, your MIDI controller without a device to hook up to really doesn't function as much other than, you know, keys. (laughs) Like you can't, you can't produce sounds without hooking it up to a computer, right? But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the issues that we face with creativity and concentration stem from computers in a way, Mm -hmm. Um, especially from like, uh, you know, I find cell phones to be like the bane of my existence. And I'll be the first person to tell you that I'm fucking addicted to my cell phone. A hundred percent. But, but I, you know, to tie this into a video game conversation, you know, I will often be playing a game and then I'll get a notification on my phone. I'll stop the game. I'll check the phone. And the next thing you know, I've gone down a rabbit hole outside of that text message that had nothing to do with anything else. And 20 minutes have passed, and I've made no accomplishments on my game. Oh, dude, or, I hate myself for it. I do it all the time. And, and like, you know, when you're, when you're trying to be creative, like whether you're playing guitar, piano, writing a book, uh, you know, writing a script, whatever, doesn't matter, painting, um, or even just playing a video game, I think we as a society really do need to get better about just putting the fucking phone down. And just it's ruining it. us, man. It's ruining it really us. is. And I'll be the first person to tell you it's affecting me. Um, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. I'm 100% with you. I, I try really hard. I, you know what? That's a lie. I don't try hard enough. None I don't of us try, do. I don't try hard enough. I definitely try. I definitely try. Like I make some, some leaps and bounds that a lot of people don't make. And I I can definitely attest to that because there are times where I will deliberately put my phone away or I will not touch it for like a good portion of the day. And I'm pretty good with it. Like Mm -hmm. if I have the right mindset, I can really not go on it at all. But there are days where you just kind of slip into this weird state of mind where you're just like, I'm, I just want to fucking be on my phone, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. and it's like, it's really bad because like, you'll just spend hours just like going on YouTube Mm -hmm. and Instagram. And the thing is, is I'm looking at some pretty positive shit. Like I'm not always looking at like junk. Like I'm looking at stuff that's very creative. Like I might be watching somebody play piano and then I'll, I'll do that for like a little too long. And then that's when I'm like, fuck man, I should be playing. Like what, why am I watching other people play so much? Like it's the same concept as, um, you know, when you're watching somebody play a game that you yeah, own, you should like, play it's the like, game. it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly. And like, I think here's the thing, dude, like if you can have that voice, that conscience that, that tells yourself, you know what, Drew, like, what are you doing, dude? Mm. If, if you can have that happen, you've already made it f- like, further than most or farther than most right because a lot of people um can't do that they get lost and they don't realize like what they're actually doing and if you can recognize that like this is a problem and i I should be playing piano or i should be playing the game instead of watching somebody else play it because it's easier Mm -hmm. i'm gonna put my phone down and i'm gonna make the effort and i'm gonna do it and a lot of times when you do that it's incredibly rewarding because you're like, holy shit, dude, this game's fucking amazing. Like, mm-hmm. what was I doing? Like, watching somebody else play it, like, so much better. Yeah. Because I'm actually doing it. So, it's I one mean, thing, I think, if you're using, you know, a playthrough as a means of whether or not you want to buy a game. Yeah. Kind of like a try before you buy kind of thing. Yep. And I like doing that. It gives me an idea about a game if, you know, I don't really know what's going on, you know, whether or not I want to buy, especially with all these fucking sales 
on the the eShop, Nintendo eShop, you know, like you buy a game for 99 cents. I'm like, well, I have to start like watching these things, <laughs> making sure, mm-hmm. in, you know, before I buy it. Otherwise, I have a pile of 99 cent games that I haven't played. Well, you know what the problem is with me sometimes is I'll I'll be doing something in Skyrim or or really any game for that matter, and sometimes I get to like a difficult position in a game or something I don't really want to do. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this, and then you just pause the game. Yeah. So you pause the game, then you pick up your phone, and yep. then that's where it starts. And you're that's like, it. and then you start watching somebody else play the game, or you're watching something else, or you're watching a cat video. And the next thing you know, you're like, ah, it's like 9.30. I think I'm just going to like put my PS4 in rest mode. I'm going to climb into bed, watch like Office and go to bed. Mm-hmm. And then like when I do that, I get up, you know, I go to work and then I'll be in my car and I'm like, the fuck did I do that last night, man? Like I wasn't even tired. I should have played the game. And then you spend the next day thinking about how you can't wait to play the game again. Mm-hmm. And it's like this weird cycle that you put yourself in, and then ultimately, it's your phone that's that's causing the problem. It's your phone, and it's like just kind of laziness. We should come up with like no phone November, dude. Totally, totally. Like, I uh, I want to get re- dude. There are days I want to smash this fucking thing, yeah. and then there are days that I I want to like cherish it like a diamond. It's 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 so weird. I think I think that's a thing. Let's make it a fucking hashtag. No phone November. Dude, we should do something like for the show. Like we should do this challenge, right? Like Will yeah. and Drew like put their phone away for every game session for like one week or something. Like we we play our game or our games for one week with no phones and then we talk about it on the like the next show. Yeah. I think that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's do it, dude. Like let's I'm so it. I'm so ready to sign up for this. It's well, I mean, you're the fucking creator, so, <laughs> so you're, you're signed up. <laughs> yeah. No, we we should do that, and I encourage anybody listening. You know, just put your phone away while you game. It'll make your experience a lot more uh, rewarding. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Honestly. If I play anything tonight, I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> so, well, this conversation went places. <laughs> it did. Um, what, what else, else we got, we- Drew? I don't know. It's a bunch of bullshit. Um, um, so there's a Resident Evil Goose mod, apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Uh, so I, I think it's the Resident Evil remake that came out, right? The Resident I, Evil 2? I think so. Yeah, I'm so not, it's Resident you know, Evil you 2. You know a little bit more about this than I do. No worries. I already got it pulled up. So uh, the title, I love the title too. Honk, someone modded the goose in Resident Evil 2. Um, I love the gif, right? Because... You're just seeing what's her face. I don't even remember her name. Just go into like this sort of dark alley or dark mm. uh, hallway, and uh, there's some sort of debris in the way. And the fucking goose uses its wing to move the debris, and then it's just like, "Yep, I'm here, and uh, I'm really large." <laughs> it, it looks apparently he's replacing, um, Mr. X. Okay, so at least that's that's my understanding from this here and. According to the Kotaku article, he's even wearing the fedora. Yeah, because, I love that. Because he's just so fancy like that quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's such a... I love how the article is like literally like a paragraph and then that's it. It's like, here it is. This is the mod. You're going to have a laugh. And uh, there we have it. It's great. I love it. It is great. Um, at some point, I think I'd like to try Resident Evil 2. Um, mm. I've heard nothing but good things about the remake. Um, or yeah, remaster. you know, those those are games that I always wanted to like sit down and just like play through from start to finish. Because I, I never, I've never played them firsthand. I've always experienced them, you know, second or third hand. Like um, a lot of my friends when I was growing up were super into Resident Evil. So I never felt compelled to play them on my own because everybody else is already talking about the game. So I just kind of like, oh, yeah, cool. But like, I really, I don't know, man, like, I know they're, they're not necessarily uh, the best games now. Like, they haven't really aged very well. They but, haven't. They haven't. Um, that being said, I think, uh, I think some of those games really are the types of things that every gamer should experience no matter how the experience is. Yeah. I think it's important, you know, like resident evil, uh, obviously has a massive fan base. And I think that, uh, 
it's important to at least try a couple out. Um, I, I love four uh, so, so much. Um, five, there, there are certain Resident Evil games that are very tankish with the controls. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody kind of knows that. If you don't, you're going to realize when you, when you play one. Um, five is kind of tankish in, in the way that it controls. It's a pretty good co-op game. I actually played that game co-op with Tom. And that was quite a lot of fun. Mm. But uh, four is a great place to start. Um, and then if you want to go back into like the roots of Resident Evil, you could do something like maybe Resident Evil one or two, like original PS one classics or, uh, play like Resident Evil zero for like GameCube or whatever. So mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of choices, but yeah, I think it's a good, uh, good experience to have just to see how far, uh, controls have come. You know, another series that I've been really wanting to go back and, and replay are the, uh, Command and Conquer games. And, um, this is kind of fresh on my mind right now because they're in the process of remastering the first Command and Conquer. That's and right. They're they're gonna they're gonna keep it all two D. It's still a you know two D top down game. They're not putting in like any crazy shit. But they are going in and remastering it and cleaning up all the sprites and everything. And they released some gameplay footage today, and it still looks like a twenty five year old game, but a twenty five year old game at high definition. <laughs> so, well, that's something like, different. Like I'm, I'm super excited. Let me, let me see if I can grab this clip for you here. Um, cause I just saw it. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. I'm going to send this over to you now and it's not much. There's not a lot to it, but, uh, it's a 30 second clip and they show like what the game used to look like. They'll zoom in on it and then they'll show you what it looks like now. They'll do like a wipe. And it looks sexy. Okay, let's take a look. This is a real-time reaction, folks. A real-time <laughs> yeah. strategy game. A fucking computer would load. Um, okay. I think, like, the internet is being attacked again because, like, Reddit's running really slow for me. Okay, so I'm watching this video, right? The first gameplay yeah. teaser? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. I I like it when you take a game that's that's old and then you kind of like high res like certain things, mm-hmm. and then you add like like sort of like nice explosion effects that are just like slightly revamped. Yeah. It's it's cool like when you see like sort of minimal touches. Yeah, um, like they're they're definitely respecting the original game. This isn't somebody's like reimagination of it. Like this is truly a remaster. Yeah, and that's kind of like the problem I have with um, Link's Awakening, uh, the new. Uh, uh, HD remaster that came out. Mm. Um, I mean, that's basically not even a remaster. It's, it's a remake. Uh, it's a remake. it is a remake. Um, and that's fine. But even though I haven't played it just upon looking at it, like it's a little bit, uh, it's not really what I wanted. Um, I think mm. it's because part of it is cause I, I really hold, or that game holds a special place in my, my heart. And even though I played it on a game boy pocket, black and white, mm. mind you, uh, maybe that was the right choice to to make the graphics look the way that they do in this in this remake but yeah there's just something about it that's a little bit like wind waker ish yep and a, a lot of people didn't like the art style in wind waker um so you know it is what it is but i i think that it it's a good example of what not to do sometimes i think they probably could have found a way to remake it without it being so completely different Mm. um they could have made like sort of a i don't know just like did what they did with this like up resed it and made it sort of like eight bit it you know eight bit ish yeah still um i don't know it's 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 a small complaint i'm I'm sure it's a good game i'm tempted to uh to circle around and pick it up at some point like I never played the original, so like I kind of feel like maybe I should do that first. But yeah, no, it was a great game. I have great memories with it, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a small thing, but I yeah. think it just kind of it, it came to memory or or it uh, came to mind because it's the opposite of this. Mm. It's a complete remake, and it looks nothing obviously like the original, and that's fine. But <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I do appreciate, I think, situations like this more when you do have those subtle touches. 
the thing that really throws me off this whole thing is that EA is uh, in charge of the remaster. They bought uh, Westwood Studios, which made the original Command & Conquer games. Um, I want to say, like, maybe early 2000s. And shortly thereafter, they ended up closing Westwood. And they, they took over the franchise at that point and did a couple Command & Conquer games, and they were kind of hit or miss. You know, Red Alert 3, I think, was pretty successful. Generals was a really fun game. But, like, the main story Command & Conquer games kind of flopped from there uh-huh. on out. And, you know, there's there's a lot of hatred for EA, especially with Command & Conquer fans, for, for doing what they did. Um, so to see Electronic Arts in charge of this remaster and seemingly, uh, you know, being cognizant of what made people love this game in the first place uh, is a very confusing feeling for me because <laughs> uh, I feel like I should be EA, you know, but yeah, we'll see. Um, that's just it. Like, that's kind of, I think, where gamers are now. Like, they, they see EA and they just immediately fucking lose their shit mm-hmm. um, because, you know. EA has their flaws. Look, they've um, they've earned the reputation. Let's be they, honest. Here. They have. Um, but what what's really nice to see is when you think of studios like Blue Point Games, they have um, they remastered like the Metal Gear Solid games for like the HD collection and the Legendary or whatever collection that I have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they were also responsible for uh, Shadow of the Colossus uh, remaster. I like it when you see a studio that's kind of just like mysterious, that's doing a really good job, like remastering something. It's Mm -hmm. cool to see that um, because it's not like, oh, Activision, EA. Like, you know, I think gamers don't really want to hear about those companies because of what's what they're known for. Mm. Um, You know, the microtransactions and just whatever else. Um, It's just cool to to see a, a game company or studio that you just don't really know much about doing a really good job yeah. with either just making a game or doing some kind of remaster. So yeah, I like Blue Point cool. a lot. Yeah, I'll have to check into them. I really haven't spent uh, much time uh, researching their stuff. So, well, well, I think we should probably keep this episode a little on the short side. Um, I don't really have anything else to talk about, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've certainly waffled on quite a bit. Um, so thanks everybody for being patient. Listen to my beard story. Uh, we really appreciate it. <laughs> hey, check out the website. Uh, Will put up an article a couple days ago about cool games. He talks about Vanquish. It's a great article. Uh, if you haven't already given it a read, please check it out. Um, and I may be adding to the Dear Backlog Diary in the next couple days. I really haven't had a chance to play much, so I don't have a lot to say. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're putting up some, some articles and some fun stuff. So uh, swing on by and check it out. And, of course, if you want to join our lovely community of Discordians, come on by, say hello. Link for that will be in the show notes. Hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at WDGR Podcast. You can follow me at Science Storm. Will, how can they find you? Will underscore gear. And, uh, of course, www.wdgrpodcast.com. That's all I got. We'll see you next time, folks. Later. <laughs>